Hey, Dia, do you know why I like hockey so much? Oh, yeah. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's another reason. There's another reason why I like hockey players. You know why? Why? Well, hockey is a beautiful mix of grace, skill, and violence, just like my sex life. <laughs> you lose teeth. Is there a lot of blood loss? Concussion? Only if I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i have a special guest with me today dia klein who works with me as a comedian and also like in my professional day job and all the rest of this stuff so hi dia hello so we are going to the avalanche hockey game on march 5th 2022 this is going to be my first ever 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 hockey game And I want to make sure to get you all prepared and ready. And dear listeners, you'll hear us give a recap of the game at the back end of this episode. So Dia, what do you know about hockey? Um, I know Paul Newman's start in Slapshot. I know the Russians and Americans had a rivalry in like the 80s. I know men don't have a lot of teeth who play hockey. I know you're taking your life into your own hands when you sit as a spectator at a hockey game because the puck could kill you. Well, there's actually a new rule to help with that one. So one of the things I wanted to make sure that you're kind of abreast of, so to speak, with what's going on here at the game is like some of the calls you might see and just kind of explaining some of the stats and stuff like that. So most important, there's a newer rule. I think it came out this past season or the season before, which is delay of game. So this wasn't a rule before, but the reason why I want to kind of warn you about it as a Jewish person is I don't want you to be triggered. <laughs> They're going to do a forced march? They're no, going to take away my no. food? So what delay a game means is when a player hits the puck out into the stands and like out of bounds intentionally. Uh, also, if they like knock the goal off of where it's stuck in the ice, that's also another reason for delay a game. But the sign for it that the refs do is they put their right hand over (gasps) their shoulder and then they extend their arm straight up into the air at an angle. It's, it's, it's a little bit Nazi ish, but it's not, I mean, there's a lot of white players in hockey, but it's not a Nazi thing. Okay. Oh, and nobody's like, uh, called them on that. Uh, no, (laughs) (laughs) that's why i just wanted you to be aware all right okay Okay. you don't have to sweat it sitting in the stands that's nothing bad on you they're not after you it's a delay of game oh my wow the nazi salute delay of game all right hockey's looking exciting already all right (laughs) (laughs) jeez there's also two things that are going to happen that can be kind of confusing if you don't know exactly what they mean and this is uh, number one, icing the puck or offsides. Okay. Icing, icing the puck. Clearly that's a dirty puck. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's a puck that's a little bit too ambitious is a good way to think about it. Oh. Uh, no, they're kind of similar because what it means is you've got players on the wrong side of the ice and the puck is in the wrong place. So uh, I have a hard time telling these two apart when they're getting called. Uh, It's not that big of a deal. Nobody goes in the box. They just like do another face off and reset where they are. So icing means the puck went sailing down to the other end of the rink. I'm going to explain this real shitty because I like hockey, but I'm not very good at explaining it. And it goes cruising over the red line, which is in the middle of the rink without the other team getting there. So yeah. it, go, it goes too, it goes faster than the team. Yeah. So it's like the avalanche are down on their side uh, where their goaltender is. And then they send the puck sailing. They're like, oh, fuck this puck. And they like smack it. And it goes all the way to the other end of the rink where the other goalie is. And they don't make a goal on it, but there's like nobody around it. That's icing. Oh, that's a great explanation. Yeah. But <laughs> if it's a power play, they can do that all day long. And then the other team has to go and chase it. 
It's like, fuck you, go chase this puck. So power play is like extra uh, lottery money? Like, I'm <laughs> <down>. <laughs> no. It might be. It depends on what your bets are when that you placed at the game. So a power play is when the other team did something wrong. So they have one of their players in the box. They had a penalty. And so for the most common ones you're going to see are a two minute minor. So that means that guy has to sit in the box for two minutes. And normally there's five players on the ice plus a goaltender, right? So you got six players on the ice. So when you've got a power play and it's in your favor, you have still got all your five guys on the ice plus goaltender and the other team has four dudes on the ice. <gasps> That's not fair. Oh, yes, it is fair. They did something wrong. They like oh. hit your dude or they did a high sticking or, you know, yeah, they were bad people. They have to go just like in Slackshot when they're talking about when you sit in the penalty box and you feel shame. That's why. Well, everyone's very mad in the penalty box. They're always like, get me fuck out of here. Come on, man. Come on, man. Fuck you. Well, right. Because they got caught doing something wrong. Like they were tripping somebody or they hit them in the face with their stick or they cross check them, which means they take like their uh, stick in both hands and they come up behind you and shove you in the back with it. That's cross checking. Oh, well, they always seem very misjudged in the penalty box. They're, they're always seem not guilty. And they're very oh. angry about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a fun place to be. But <laughs> so talking about penalties, uh, a two minute minor means the dude has to sit in the box for two minutes, unless the other team scores a goal in that time, in which case the power play is over. Oh, so it's like get out of jail free, like Monopoly. But it's not jail, jail free. It costs you a goal. <laughs> well, let's get out of jail early. It's like you got a community chest that's like, now you can go. Right. Uh, a, a two minute major penalty by comparison means the other team can score as many times as they want to in those two. Minutes. In that power play, they could yeah, just yeah. be like, fuck you, motherfucker. That's right. Does it actually happen? Like, are they like, one's good? No, no, they want to get as many goals as they can. Yeah. <laughs> well, so like, what's a, what's a hockey game score? Like one to three. You see that um, the abs have been really hot this year. So we've seen a lot of games where it was like five to three or seven to two. I think one game we went to was like a seven to zero shutout. Oh, that's so sad. Did they give the guys like trophies for just trying? Oh, fuck no. Hello. <laughs> Oh, wait, they're still getting paid. They're professional yeah, athletes. They're what do they care? Millions. It's okay, Dia. What do they care? If they don't win, I still get a paycheck. Oh, they'll get, trust me, they're competitive people. They, they want to win. They want to win. So, okay. Okay. So I can, ex and how long is a hockey game? So there are three periods and the periods are 20 minutes each. And then you have a 15 minute intermission in between. it. So tell me, because one of the things I like so dislike about sports is like you just said it's a 20 minute period. But in reality, that 20 minutes is an hour because oh, we're holding time because a dick, a dick, a dick, a dick, a dick, a dick. And that was oh, a hockey does not dick around very much. This is okay, one of the reasons okay. why I love hockey and I hate football. The football so, does that. Football's like oh. hold the clock and you're like, I thought it was a 10 minute thing. And now you're an hour in. Yeah. Football is very boring because it's like everybody stands around and then they got to get in a huddle and they got to talk about what they're going to do. And then they got to line up and they play for six seconds and then they walk back to their huddle and they dick around and what am I going to do? And blah, 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 and just like shit loads of, um, you know, when they're like, oh, let's take a break, a timeout not a timeout i don't even know what it's called they don't really do that at all so it's so, so it's so it's full action for 20 minutes pretty close to it yes okay. you okay. might see delays where they have to do face-offs um Ooh, so what's a face-off where they're like fuck you and they like throw their masks off uh no that no those are fights <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> a face-off is where you've got um, the ref is holding the puck in like the middle of a circle and there's two players that are facing off. They're like facing each other 
And, and, they, uh, and they fight for the puck. That's right. That's, that's how right. you start the game. Exactly. <gasps> Ooh, uh, but the, you do that in every game. Well, not every game. Ba- basketball, you do that. It's tip off in basketball. The okay. same idea. Okay. 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 Right. Right. And then when you, you have to do a face off again, if players are off sides or if you ice the puck. Because that's not a dirty puck. That's a puck that got ahead of its team. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Am I going to be close enough to see the puck? Oh, yes, you will. Okay. Because okay. I, I, I was told I should look at the puck. Watch the puck. And if you ever lose sight of where the puck is. Um, look at where all the hockey players are going because they're heading towards towards the, the puck. puck. Okay. Um, I have two very important questions that I need really concrete answers to. Okay. Is it going to be cold? What do I need to wear? Uh, wear something semi-warm, but don't worry about wearing a coat or anything like that. Oh, okay. You're, okay. You're not sitting on the glass, so you're not not, not right up against the, the ice. And uh, there's other bodies around you. So, okay. Okay, good. Like and a sweatshirt or something is just fine. Perfect. And then, question number two what kind of food are they going to have? Because I'm going to get hungry. Uh, it's Pepsi Center or actually Ball Arena now. Their food is kind of shitty. Is and it like beer and hot dogs and yeah, nachos? Brats and pizza and stuff like that. Can I bring my own food? No. But you do have to bring your mask and you have to bring your vaccination card. Got it. You have to bring your ID to prove that's your vaccination card and all the rest of that, which is kind of nice because you know you don't want to catch germs by everybody. No, I don't I don't want to go to a super spreader event. <laughs> yeah, especially because everybody's like yelling and screaming and stuff. Yeah. Like okay, this is really exciting. Okay, I am hopeful for a fight. I would like to see some action. All of us would like to see a fight. I would. That's what is that why you like hockey? Blood on the ice. I told you it's that beautiful mix of grace, skill and violence. Yes. OK. OK. Well, I'm going to hope for a fight. Um, I'm going to hope for the puck not to kill me. Uh, I'm going to hope for I'm going to hope for some I'm going to hope for some action, Donna. I know you looking for action, but I'm going to hope for some player action. I'm going to try to get noticed. Uh, uh good luck <laughs> i mean if you showed up with a sign in because you're allowed to watch warm-ups and stuff so people line up along the glass and they bring signs and stuff like that and the players will like throw pucks to people and stuff like that uh but if you're not like a super cute girl or a kid you're probably not going to get shit uh who said i wasn't a super cute girl well you're cuter than me but <laughs> <laughs> he's Donna with the truth and everything are Gosh. you kidding I'm an old fat lady they are not interested in me because I'm not even I'm not even cute enough to be like the cute grandmother super fan yet the, well besides I'm all like she male trans or whatever nobody can <laughs> tell what it is so I'm gonna wear I'm gonna I'm gonna raise awareness at this hockey game. This is my uh, third mission. I'm gonna raise awareness. I'm going to wear my got anosmia sweatshirt. Oh, there you go. That's Perfect. gonna get me attention. There is a different cause going on tonight, so you might be foreshadowed. That or, is true. That or is whatever. True. It's it's Pride Night. So Yes, that's yeah. in celebration and support of the LGBTQ. Oh, that's awesome. Community. Yeah. Ain't got nothing to do with my nuts. <laughs> no, but you can be proud of it. Sure. I'm going to be, I'm proud. I'm, I'm pride, prideful of my cis nose. <laughs> cis nose. <laughs> oh. My nose is autistic. I have an autistic, I have an Asperger's nose, but it's not Asperger. It's not Aus- a autism awareness i'm just not on the raw I, I love pride night i'm just gonna be all happy at pride night rocking some anosmia there you go and one last thing just to give you a heads up now i'm kind of a horrible person and i noticed this but you know what i'm not the one who set the schedule and everybody else in the stands last time we were there last week was mentioning it so the avalanche are playing the calgary flames on okay. pride night Oh uh, my God. Well, the flames have to win. I'm going to be all flame girl flame. Uh, I'm going to yeah. be rooting for the flamers. 
I know. Everybody's like, flamers. It's like, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Dang. So, all right. Oh, I love everybody it. out there listening. Please do not send me hate mail. I am very supportive of the LGBTQ community. I am in no way, you know, saying uh, derogatory slurs against the community. I'm just saying that the hockey gods are laughing. They, they found a beautiful moment to blaze. <laughs> <laughs> they picked flamers on Pride Night. Come on. Yeah. It's prophetic. Yeah. Anyways, so hang in here, listen to some music, and then we'll tell you how the game was. All right, so welcome back, everybody. We are back from the game. That was quite a time warp. I know that song was so short, right, Dia? <laughs> Woo! Time flies. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it is after the Avalanche versus the Flames. And uh, unfortunately, the Avalanche lost. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. So, Dia, you are not allowed to go to any more games because clearly this is your fault. I'm a jinx. I'm a clean pair of hockey socks. I'm a jinx. Yeah. Yeah. So, what? but what did you think of the game? Do you want my play-by-play or do you want my overall impressions? Well, start with your overall impressions, of course. I like hockey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little upset that I have not been in person to a hockey game before. I like hockey. <laughs> That's an excellent statement. From hockey version, uh, virgin to hockey fan. Hockey fan. About 20 minutes into the game, Mark looks over at me and he goes, do we need to get season tickets? <laughs> <laughs> the 20 minutes is the end of the first period. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the end of the first period, he wanted to know if we should get season tickets. And your answer was? Uh, I think we might need to. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. So there's just so much to unpack. Okay. There's so much to unpack about this. Um, the first big point I want to talk about is nobody told me Prince Harry played for our hockey team. What? I didn't know. I didn't know that he does. What are you uh, talking about? The ginger. You have. There's two gingers on the ice, and one of them looks like Prince Harry. Yeah. Which one? I don't know. The dude with the beard. <laughs> I don't know. It's like half of them. They oh all have that kind of stubbly beard thing going on right well, now. Well, one of them, like he's the one that scored the first goal. Oh, Gabriel Landeskog. Okay. Yeah. Well. Ugh. The Norwegian looks like Prince Harry. Uh, he's uh, from Sweden. Yes. yes. Sweden. Oh, yeah. 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 I was like, what? I didn't know gingers could skate. And then I didn't know Prince Harry was on the ice. So that was a big woke moment for me. I never me. thought of him as a ginger. I always thought of him, you know, as your typical blonde Nordic god. Oh, no, that dude's a ginger. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, he's awful of flaming. He's a flamer red ginger. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. But there was another redhead too that I was like, what? So that was okay. So that was pretty cool. And I have to tell you, I had so many impressions. I had to take notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause I had questions and I had comments. And so here's the thing, dear listeners. Yeah. This was a rocking game. It was loud. It was involved. It was a, almost a sellout crowd and Dia sitting there taking notes. I'm taking notes and I'm like, do -ka -do -ka -do -ka -do on my little phone. Like, oh, Mark would have to like elbow me. There's a fight. There's a fight. Get off. But, I'm like, but I was taking notes on something else. So the first thing I would say to, to, to me two days ago before I went 
what would be to bring earplugs. I had no idea how loud. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm like, I'm like hearing impaired now, so I don't even realize how loud it is. (laughs) My ears ring all the time. It was so loud. And I was, I got afraid when we would do something good because I was like, no, stop with the noise. I was like a little autistic kid in the corner, like, can't take the noise. It was a lot of noise. So I, I would, I would recommend my future self bring bring some some earplugs for that oh, sort of thing uh, you're going to kick yourself in the ass for this um if you go to guest services they will provide those kind of things for you and oh. they have sensory packs for these sensitive kids too <gasps> but do they have an anosmic pack donna i doubt it what i doubt it, it no like? what would it smell like hockey guys uniforms and beer <laughs> blood and ice i don't know yeah fandom <laughs> spirit i don't know yeah you have to okay. ask nirvana what that smells like that's right okay okay so that was that was a big uh, lesson right there mm-hmm. and i saw you before the game started i went over and ryan was wearing his jersey and i was and he had some he had a dude on the back um mm-hmm. i guess his like favorite player but then that guy got on the ice and they booed him no, they said Moose. Oh, that's Ranton in. His nickname is Moose. Why? I is don't from know. Alaska? No, he's um what the hell is he from? He's from one of the European countries. So no. Oh. No. Okay, well that clears up a lot. I'm like, why is Ryan wearing the villain jersey? Okay, they were saying Moose. Sure yeah. sounded like boo to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It, All right. it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to say my favorite part of the game was before the game even started the, the jumbotron thing. Yeah. They had, they, they okay. Showed... okay. Rantanen is from Finland. Yes. From Finland. Do they yeah. have meese in Finland? Yeah. Oh, of course they do. They have a lot of moose <laughs> in Finland. <laughs> huh. He must be big. Rantanen, he's not necessarily the biggest guy out there. He is, let's see. I love this when they put in all his stats. So we'll, we'll get to feel nice and old. He was born, uh, he's 25 years old. He's oh, Jesus. In, he was born in 1996. <laughs> oh, good Lord. He's 6'4". What, what does it have his shoe size? No, but he's uh, 215 pounds. So that's like all lean muscle. Mm. Mm. All right. Okay. He's not my favorite on the team, but you know, he still qualifies on my list because he's a, okay. he's a professional hockey player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your list is not um, too specific. No. <laughs> no, Van de Skog is not on my list because even in my fantasies, he is way too hot for me. <laughs> <laughs> There was some of them. I looked on the roster. There's some of them, but they're like, ha, I got no teeth photos. Like, hello, mama. I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you win that picture out there? All right. Because those are badges of honor. Yeah, know? clearly. Yeah. Clearly. Okay, so back to my favorite moment that happened on the Jumbotron before the game started. They, you know, show the crowd people, and there was this sweet little boy in a wheelchair oh yeah mm-hmm. that saw himself on the jumbotron and he got so excited and pumped it was just like the most beautiful pure expression of joy that i've ever seen it was just it was like we can leave now that was worth the price of admission right there that was so yeah, and he got a lot of cheers too he got a lot of cheers and i say they stayed on him for a good 15, maybe 20 seconds. He got a good, got some good camera. I tried to get camera. I didn't get any camera. Yeah. Well, you're not a cute kid and you're not like a hot girl. So. No, I did wear my well, I mean, you're hot in some circles, but you're not like <laughs> hockey girl fan hot. <laughs> oh my God. Please tell me what circles these are so I can go find one. And it. <laughs> the weird ones, Dia. The weird, yeah. Well, Nobody I'll, talks I'll about show them. you some circles that are like the lo- the standards are real low. I mean, they, they kind of <laughs> they kind of think I'm cute. So, 
I'll just stand next to you and be like, what's going on? Donna? Yeah, right? I'm, I'm the five that makes your six look good. <laughs> That's the new Golden Girls Club. <laughs> oh my God. We are the Golden Girls age. Well, I'm almost the Golden Girls age. You're the golden, you're the same age as the Golden Girls. What? Yes. Yes. They oh. woke it up. They were 50 when they recorded that show. Yep. 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 Holy yep. shit. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. That's what 80s in the 80s, 50, the 50s look like. Yeah, crazy don't look like that anymore. No, okay. <laughs> things, things I I liked. I I liked it when they booed the refs. It was like pretty funny that they were the villains. I guess refs are always villains. Actually, they were pooing. Uh, pooing. They were booing Calgary when they came out. Oh, not the refs. Not the refs. Oh, mm. God, I am misinterpreting <laughs> everything. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, uh, it was kind of hard to see them coming out because they were wearing their white jerseys, the visiting team jerseys, and they mm -hmm. didn't put any lights on them when they come out. Oh, that's so, so it, the, you know, this, the ice is still kind of dark because they've got like the pregame um, hype reels going. Yep, and yep, stuff. yep. So, yeah, that's the crowd. They're re reacting because Calgary coming out first. And then... That. Oh, well, that made me feel bad for the then, then for the visiting team. They're good guys just doing their best they can. They uh, no, that's them. part of the fun. You got to boo. I know. Okay. So what's up? Seriously, with all the ice cleaning, not the Zamboni, the like oh. ding dongs with the ice shovels. Doo -doo -doo. The ice patrol. Yes. What, why and when and what? Like, okay. That? few reasons why this is happening so sometimes they have to take a pause in the game when there's like a natural break in the action it's called a tv timeout so uh if you look over by the penalty boxes and the red light is on that's a tv timeout because they got to play the commercials on tv right and then they go through and they shovel up all the snow so all that shaved ice from the from the state state. Area yep. is snow and uh it'll slow down the ice i guess physics wise but because if, if you think about it there's all this shaved ice all over the playing field and you don't want to be a new thing like no right? it's not it's not that new because if you think about it you want the puck to glide evenly across the ice right well if it starts hitting snow it'll slow it down and make it bounce weird and oh this stuff besides it gives them something to do yes <laughs> And like, who are these kids? Like, how, like, is that a badge of honor? Like I- It's the um, equivalent of cheerleaders in football, except they have a real job. <laughs> like, they do, all right. At first I thought it was all lady ice cleaners. Then I noticed some dudes. I think last season is when they added some male ice patrol members. Oh, did they get a little like feedback? Like what up with just the ladies, dude? Yeah, it was a, you know, a thing of inclusion there. They added some guys. Good. Okay. They are kind of, they kind of tend to look like twinks, but that's okay. <laughs> I was glad to see men. Cause I was like, why, why with the lady ice cleaners? Okay. So that's good. But you want to know a funny thing about Maddox? Yes. So when he was younger and we started going to the games, I'd always ask him who is his favorite player. And he would say the ice girls. Oh, he's been a horn dog since he was three years old. <laughs> I like where they push the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> they look pretty in their pants. Yeah. Well, no, they used to wear much skimpier outfits. <gasps> yeah. Good so Lord. When they added them in, they changed that. They used to have being like short skirts and things like that. Like hooters? Oh, uh, no, not that bad. But, you know. Hold now on. I see why you Hold said on. cheerleading, the cheerleaders of the ice team. I yeah. get it now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, they I loved Maddox and. Oh, and would they go over and wave to him? Oh yeah. Or if we were doing like a special promotion where you got to skate around on the ice after the game, they would like skate around with him and he'd like walk up to them and ask, will you hold my hand and skate with me? And they'd be like, oh, you're so cute. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be like, I'm going to fall on, on you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> sometimes you know he would like play it up and he's done that like his whole skating career is hilarious and there was one time where we were doing the thing and he like had like two or three of the girls around him 
and he was going to challenge them to a race. And so this other just like mid twenties dude, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, these ice girls are nice and friendly. I'm going to come talk to them. And then he's all like standing there. He's going to race with Maddox and the girls and they all take off and they blaze fast because he was like doing it for real. And then this guy just gets blown out of the water and he's all like, ah, <laughs> dude you and your mangy ass who's not really hot really cannot compete with the adorable eight-year-old can't do it and he had a mohawk then i'm sure right oh yeah he had his helmet on so you can... oh yeah it's oh right because you have to skate but i enjoyed seeing maddox on the promo reel yeah like mm-hmm. that was awesome that he's part of their official promo reel that's awesome yeah he ended up on the camera a couple of times he did okay. I only noticed the once. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, too bad. I would have. I would have yelled if I had known. Okay, so let's talk about the fights, okay? Because that was pretty interesting. This was a pretty physical game. There was a lot more real fights going on in this one than there's been in past games. So okay, okay. Yeah, the so- fighting is not the level of of slap shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But this was very interesting. Like, I could see the aggression rising. Like, oh, dude just got smacked into the side of the rink. He's going to. Oh, yeah. Happy. Kadri wanted a fight, man. He got, uh, they got a dirty hit on him and kind of like he, he was expecting the call for the cross check and he didn't get it. And then he, he was like ready to throw down gloves and go after this guy, but there was no whistle. So the play just continued on, so, but he was pissed. Yeah, I could, I could tell. Okay, yeah. and then there, there were the, I will say the typical, there were like two or three typical fights that were like, tussle, tussle, rah, 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 tussle, I'm gonna do, do, shove, 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 Ugh! right? Yeah, that's, the, uh, that's what uh, Ryan calls a discussion. Yes, they were having a discussion of hands. Yeah, and sticks Mm -hmm. and then there was what i like to call well i should correct that what my daughter likes to call a ring fight and a ring fight by her definition two people in the middle having a fight and everyone else in the circle around them is cheering them on yeah there was a full-blown put your dukes up I'm going to smash you fight. Yeah. And the refs stood there watching. And I did not understand that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was like, it was like the fans paid for this ticket. Every game we give them a fight. You two drew the unlucky short sticks. Have at it. Yeah. So uh, our player there is McDermott. That's who was picking the fight with this one. I didn't see what their thing was. They were like in a face-off. I believe this is in the second period. And the McDermott is one of our defensemen. He's our goon. Okay. If we necessarily had a goon. A goon is your guy who's your enforcer. They'll pick the fights and get real physical. Right. So McDermott's our goon. I was trying to look up who he fought in that. Because these two must have been chirping at each other. You know, like trading insults and all the rest of that because the face-off didn't even really get to happen Mm -hmm. and then they were like throwing gloves down full-on fist to each other yeah it was a good long fight it probably lasted a couple of minutes yeah yeah it was a five minute major penalty on them yeah it was a big big penalty it was towards the end of the game or or the end of a quarter period period end of a period Mm -hmm. and and it, it ended because I want to say the avalanche guy was just like enough. They were too evenly matched. So usually fights end when somebody gets taken to the ice. Okay. Oh, but they were pushing or pushing or whatever. Right. But they were like holding onto the Jersey and trading punches in the faces back and forth for like a good. Well, two minutes. Yeah. 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 Two minutes. That's a real long fight. Okay. Okay. And I was waiting, like, I thought that fight would end with somebody pulling a Jersey over their head or something. Like I thought that would be the mark of, I won the fight. No, that doesn't happen all that often because then you can't punch them in the face anymore. (laughs) Usually, 
it's usually when somebody gets taken to the ice, that's when the refs will step in and officially break it up. Oh, okay. So they, okay. So the refs were there to break it up if the players themselves didn't stop. So the players stopped themselves. Which they, is real rare because usually there's a clear winner or loser in the fight. Yeah. And this wasn't, this was just went, just went on and on and on. It did. And, and then it got tired. And they got basically, it was like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'll just go in the box. Yeah. Mm. That was interesting. Yeah. That was very, very interesting. I did not see any blood on the ice. Oh, you missed it because Jost got hit in the face with a puck. <gasps> and there was blood on the ice from that. How, I did not see that on the replay and I did not see that on the ice. Wow. They didn't, they didn't show it on the replay because number one, somebody got hurt. And sometimes they'll, if there's like a question about somebody getting hurt, they'll show it. Like a few games ago, one of the refs fell to the ice. We Nobody knew what the hell happened. It turns out um, he got hit in the groin either with a puck or a stick so was, everybody enjoyed that injury actually oh my god wait so the guy that got hit in the face with the puck did he get hit right here like side of his Probably. mouth Probably. because i did see all of a sudden there was a player with a red like quarter sized circle to the side of his mouth yeah probably that was probably joe's oh <gasps> God, he probably lost a tooth. He might have. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that I can't unsee. It's very disturbing. And apparently all the goalies do it. Mark said, they're stretching. I said, he's humping the ice. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a goalie stretch. I said, he's humping the ice. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Is that? <laughs> it's. It's obscene to look at. It's well, a- <laughs> I don't have a problem with this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because there was so much equipment involved. I was just like, oh, I don't, uh, privacy? I don't know. Yeah. It was very odd. <laughs> it me eyes. <laughs> it's literally a sex move. Like, full on. Oh, well, okay. I never, I never thought of it that way, Dia, but now I always will in most Next. favorable light. <laughs> you could just see yourself slid down on the ice, scooching closer. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, goalie? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. What else do I have to say? Okay, the lady next to me was very anxious and the guy in front of me was super armchair uh player okay so so the lady next to me was like shoot the damn puck come on just shoot the damn puck oh yeah very very Mm -hmm. anxious about the the abs not shooting the damn puck sometimes um we get a little bit upset with them because they do uh, a lot of passing back and forth and try to get to the perfect play especially if they're on power play they're really bad about that it drives us all crazy yes well that drove the guy in front of me the armchair player really Mm -hmm. crazy because he like he kept saying he kept calling out the play like like taking the shot and shoot now and do that and whatever and so I was I was kind of (laughs) I had a little bit of a a show in the stands Mm -hmm. with these two people so that was interesting Mm -hmm. that was kind of fun um I was, I was really, really, really surprised with how produced a hockey game is. Oh yeah. Well, you know, in, in, in between all those breaks, they've got games going on with sponsors and mm-hmm. things to see crowds involved and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I have to say, I have written two resumes for people who do the in-game reels and promotion and videos and graphics. Now you know what that means. Now I know what that means. I mean, not specifically hockey. They did it for like sports and college basketball and stuff like that. But now I know exactly what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Ta-da. Ta-da. That was. You're earning your keep again on this business expense. (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. And then 
and I, I did treat myself to stadium treat. Okay. Because it, I had to have the experience. So any guesses what I decided to eat? I know what you did. You ate popcorn. Cause Ryan told me you had a massive bag of popcorn. <laughs> It's like this. It was huge. It was, it was like, like like four feet. Okay, you're on yeah. podcast. You have to sit. Yeah, the, the dimension. Yeah. it was. Yeah, it was. It was the size yeah. of a child. And I'm just like. <laughs> Mark's like, there's a fight. My <laughs> oh my god! I splurged and had kettle corn, like a four foot bag of kettle corn that cost twenty seven thousand dollars. Yeah. What did you think about overtime? That was pretty cool. I was, I was unsure how they were going to do it. And then I saw, oh, it's because I'm like, if they're so evenly matched, it's going to go on forever. We're like triple overtime. Right. But then I saw that it was three against three or right. Three players. Yep. And a goalie. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. And it was, I, I didn't understand what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I was, I didn't know if it was like first goal wins, which that's what it was or, or what. So I was a little taken back as soon as they won then it was like then everybody left i was like wait but there's three minutes on the clock still. well there was way more than that left so you know that here's my take on this particular overtime it's like we had a massive hype going on right they were doing the oh let's hear the whole stadium scream and shout and they were doing the the thing they put on the announcement of like it's all you. So they were going to do no music, no nothing like that for the full five minutes of overtime. Just, us, just the crap. I, yeah, I hate it when they do that. But anyways, so they were still prepping the ice for the three on three. And so they do the, okay, all the 300 level people scream, all the 200 level, and that's club level. So they're never very loud. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting my shot today. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, and then, of course, the hundreds, which is the lowest level. And then it's like everybody. And then they're showing the decibel counter. And I think we got up to 118 was as loud as it got yep. in there. And then they go for overtime. And at 37 seconds, fucking Calgary scores. Oosh. It was it's very- like, it's just like premature ejaculation right <laughs> you got all this hype you got all this all hot and bothered and excited for what was going to happen it was like uh. and 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 because nobody cheers for the opposing team's goal you're a little unsure what just happened you're a little like what happened what happened? was that it <laughs> did you go <laughs> Did you come? Yeah, because I was like, what happened? Did, did they make a goal? I don't know. Nobody made any noise. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even like the, oh. Yeah, it was just like. It was just like. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that was pretty. Yeah, that was that was interesting. I can't, be- I cannot believe I literally got everything I asked for. Mm-hmm. I got an amazing game. I got overtime. I got a really specific grudge match fight. <laughs> I, got, yeah. I got great game four to three. It was yeah. Really, really. I and mean, we got the first goal less than a minute into the game. Yeah. Like that was awesome. Yeah. The first the first goal was at like 42 seconds. Yep. 42 we yeah. saw a goalie change. So it's really rare when we actually have to change goalies, especially on our side. Um, just so you know, so originally we had Kemper in the net and he just wasn't doing the job. He let three goals on 15 shots, which is horrifying. So, oh, now how well did the second goal he did? Cause I saw him save a lot. Maybe that's just because he, so he had right next to me. He had 22 shots on goal and he let one through. So the wrong one, the wrong <laughs> one, the worst one possible is what he let through. So my math is not being happy here. I mean, it's still, you know, a 4.5 save percentage, but 04.5 is what it's saying. So, you know, 95%, what the hell? So 21 shots blocked out of 22. Yeah, that's a 90.95. So you did great. Except for the last one. (laughs) Well, he didn't have anybody helping him. It was difficult. His buddies were off the ice. 
That's why it's your fucking job. <laughs> you had one job. Stop I'm amazed at how much uh, blocking equipment the goalie is allowed to wear. Like, I'm amazed anything gets through because they're so, like, transformer. There's so much stuff on them that extends outside of their body. Yeah, and they're pretty big guys, too. I mean, they they hu- they purposely choose people who are physically larger because they, they cover, cover more. more than that. Yeah. So Darcy Kemper, he's our main goalie. Let's see how big he is. I like to I like to see how big they are. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, quite the big question on Google today. Why did Darcy Kemper leave the game? <laughs> he was fucking sucking that night. <laughs> oh, it says he had an injury. Oh. oh, that he had an injury sustained in the game or he started he did. the game. He did. Here we are giving him shit. And he had a, he, he had an owie. He had an out his foot or his hand. Maybe he had a loose tooth. Oh, no, actually that was the game from the wild. So no, he doesn't have this excuse. That was January 17th. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh. back to, back to, back to sucking, back yeah. to sucking, back to teasing. Yeah. Wow. All right. So here, I mean, Darcy Kemper is six foot five, 215 pounds, 31 years old. Well, he's a little older. So I like that. The young one, the 25 year old, that's a little, yeah. 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 yeah, That's a little inappropriate. Yeah. His normal (laughs) save percentage is uh, 0.918. So he had a bad, he was having a bad night. He was having a bad, bad night. By comparison, Fran Puse, I can never pronounce his name. He's from uh, Czechoslovakia, so I can never pronounce his name right. The one they replaced him with? Yeah. Frankie is what we say. He's only uh, six feet tall. Oh, he's a little guy. For a uh, uh, goalie, yes. 179 pounds. Oh, he's a lean little guy. Yeah. Most hockey players are pretty lean because you saw they haul ass. Yeah up and down the the ice all the time yeah exactly and i was very very happy one of my favorite players from the avalanche that we traded away i got to see yeah i said that was a lovely little love letter to him yes you know it was um zadorov was he on the ice last uh, on the game yeah yeah he plays for the flames now did he fight his former teammates no, but he uh, spent some time in the box for slamming into people. That's for sure. <laughs> that's what he does. That's his, he's a, he's a bulldozer. Yeah. Big Z. Now I have a bit of a Easter egg surprise for you and oh. I'm going to email it to you okay. and you can post it in the show notes and disseminate it widely. All right. I realized that I have a photo of me as like a two-year-old wearing my favorite sweatshirt. Okay. And I realized it's a hockey sweatshirt. <laughs> you just now realized it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I, I have to go, I'm going to go look at the photo and I'll, I'll scan it and, and email it to you. But I, I'm pretty sure it's, I was telling Mark about it and he said, because I grew up in DC mm-hmm. and I was telling him two years old, I had a hockey sweatshirt and he goes, is it the nationals? I was like, how would you know that? I think it is. How would he know that? That's the team that plays in Washington. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Watch, I'll go look at it. I'll be like, it's not the nationals. It's some Canadian team. Oh, okay. Oh. He said it so like mind reading. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll be sure to give you uh, the name and number of my ticket rep for the Apple. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Please. So, well, yeah. We have partial season tickets. So we just go to 11 games a year. And that of- seems about perfect because um, to give you an idea, the seasons are 82 games. What? So it's 41 home games what? Over, over like six months. And that's not counting playoffs or Stanley Cup or anything. Is that a lot comparative to sports teams or do they all play that many games? 
Um, basketball is about that same number. Don't quote me on that. Baseball is like something really stupid, like 164 or something. What? When they're not on strike. But that's yeah, a lot. That is a lot. I had no I I literally had no idea. I I literally had no idea. I thought so this is like this is like yet another reason why football is so freaking lame. Because it's so few games. Well, it's so, very few games. It's only once a week. There's all the talk and dick around and dick around, you know, and all yep, the rest of yep, that. Yep. And um, not only that, it's like you could just lose a couple of games. It'll totally fuck up your standings for playoffs and all the rest of this because every single game matters so much. Well, what if you're having just bad luck? Mm-hmm. This is why I say all the time that the Super Bowl is not a meeting of the two best teams. I compare this to like candidates getting through the HR process too. It's like, it's not the top candidates that the hiring manager gets to meet. Mm. It's the two teams that survived the best with the best luck and the fewest amount of injuries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That tends to be who your Super Bowl teams are. And that's why a lot of times the game sucks. (laughs) Yeah, I would imagine so. Haven't done that. Um, I'd have no intention of doing the football thing. That yeah, seems horrifying. That um, seems that seems horrifying. Oh, but you know what I did wonder about? There were like when baseball, I, I went to a baseball game a couple of years ago, my first baseball game, and there were a lot of uh Cuban guys, like a lot of just I think it was Cuba. Like we got there was just a lot of influx of guys from south america or something that just like play baseball and then there is there's a lot of diversity within the baseball community so hockey i was like well we just go to like russia and norway and canada oh yeah those tend to be the places that are going to be biggest and then and then it's just like a draft where they're just like i'll take that guy and that guy and then we just form a legion so it's not it's like the olympics it doesn't matter if you were born here or live here you just got conscripted here it's actually really tough to get in if you're an American, just because um, there's not the same culture of hockey excellence mm-hmm. and competition levels as it here. So Maddox is 10 and he's in a very competitive hockey league this year. So he made the cut. He's in the top in his division, right? He's in the top competitive league out of what they offer. And a lot of times they even have to play down a level because there's just not enough teams at his same level here in Colorado. So that's why he's gone to tournaments in like Fargo and Minneapolis and, you know, all these oh. North places and they get their asses handed to them. Oh my God. They had a uh, tournament in Fargo two weekends ago. They won the first two games just barely and then they just lost atrociously the next three games. And if you think about it, why? Well, they're in fucking Fargo. What else do these kids have to do? They can't play football because it's all ice and snow and glaciers and shit for the rest of the year. They can't do baseball for just more than two months. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, all the other sports are out. And who else are they playing? They're playing all the other kids from Canada who are crossing over the border for, you know, competition. So it's a very big deal. That's why you don't see a whole lot of Spanish hockey players. Do we have any black hockey players? Is that a thing? We do. And it's not on our, not on the abs. Yeah. Um, We do have one person of color who plays for us. That's Nazem Kadri. A few weeks ago, NHL was putting together some reels and info things to like celebrate people of color in the NHL because it's been a problem in the past because they get harassed like really fucking bad like if if they are a person of color in the league you mean yeah really and last night I mean it was pride night they're like but they're going to harass people of color but embrace pride that's so different teams different cultures and now believe me there are plenty of fans who weren't happy about fucking pride night because they're just bigots and stupid and close-minded and all the rest of that but you know in the whole thing 
the video is like Kadri mentioned, sometimes you'll hear it from the stands. People will yell at him, get off the ice you stand in, inward. Yeah. What? I know. Oh. It's like, oh. hey, okay, you know, we can boo the players, we can have some fun, you know, kind of with our rivalries and shit, but there's still lines you don't cross. That's disappointing. Yeah, you know, and there's like um for the Chicago Blackhawks, there's two brothers who are playing hockey on the same team. And they're both black. And their dad was a um, basketball player for the Nuggets. And oh. they, they ended up going to a hockey game and they met with Joe Sackick afterwards because, of course, he pulled strings because he plays for the Nuggets. <laughs> they're all one by Cronky, right? And then his sons were like, wow, we don't want to play basketball. We don't want to play hockey. And Sackick looks at him, go learn how to skate. <laughs> step one learn how to skate obviously it worked for them so oh my goodness but is it like really like not even a percentage point of how many people of color oh now we gotta do the google and do the google get me a metric i need a number (laughs) it's always funny to see what google offers let's see uh (laughs) so stupid oh it's like how many people of color have won survivor dude i never look up the stats on survivor why are you suggesting that for me (laughs) i'm looking up all this hockey stats why would you even suggest that so um so the number of black hockey players moved from 26 by the end of the 20th century up to 32 in 2016 and how many, but like out of, is that like, we have okay, a- so most current and, but this is according to Wikipedia. So take it as yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, according to an article in USA Today, 97% of the NHL is white. The other 3% is different ethnicities, including uh, indigenous peoples to the North America. Yay, yeah. yeah. Um, Obviously, we have some Middle Eastern descent. I think yeah. Kadri may be the only one there. Uh, and 26 are Black specifically. Interesting. Yeah. This is like it needs a renaissance like ballet, right? Like mm-hmm. we need a hockey renaissance. Yeah. There's some interesting articles because some of these guys have come out about like how badly they were hazed and stuff. Mm. And it's really sad and shameful and some of them were like driven out of the league because when hockey players are harassing each other it's like purposely knocking their teeth out and then just laughing about it it's just it's yeah i mean they were aggressive already yeah i would hate to have that aggression be then filled with bigotry yeah especially a, a, a teammate or someone you're playing against instead of just that team fervor spirit to mm-hmm. have it filled with all of ugh, racism and big ugh. but you know what mm-hmm. they're working on it is the thing good part well of, you know, first part of fixing a problem is recognizing that it's yeah, there. acknowledging it yeah well i i really was glad that i was able to take part in pride night then mm-hmm. because i i did see the positive effect of that movement uh, i felt the positive effect from the team and on the people in the stands i mean i thought it was very supportive and it's grown a lot in the last five years that i've seen a lot so good well i think it's one of the things that had to like grow incrementally for the fans to accept it Mm. Mm. Hmm. so it's just interesting to see how culture evolves yeah yeah interesting well here's hoping that uh the next time is now yeah and now there we are ending things on a very serious note thanks for, 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 for this is a comedy podcast right <laughs> let me say something funny yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and then racism. Let's tell some dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, remember the guy who was humping the ice? He was humping <laughs> the ice. Just, just remember that. That was funny. Yeah. But now you can really understand, though, where my point is on 
you know, yeah. why hockey players are on the cheat sheet list. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you tangentially <laughs> on that. I'm going to qualify it. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I like my, I like all of the men, all of the sex older. I don't like young. It's just too, not my flavor. I like them a little crusty, like I'm a little older, like I'm a little used and beat up. <laughs> I'll take I'll take the reti- the older ones who are getting ready to retire. Um, mm-hmm. I do like teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I do like teeth, but I like the ones with the fucked up faces. Yeah. So that's kind of my fl- yeah. I don't like the pretty ones. I get uncomfortable. Makes right. like mm-mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not the ugly one in this equation. Next. <laughs> <laughs> you need a, so you need a four face. you need a yes. four to make your six yes good. yes donna you have figured out my formula that's my formula uh, i, I, I need about to... mark now oh <laughs> mark's a good old crusty he looks like he's a great combination of bruce willis and kevin costner he's kind of he has that he he has and Wee bruce... herman and Wee herman <laughs> and Wee herman we did that face swap, you know, that they, you can do a, your face on a yeah. character. I yeah. face swapped myself and him into fifth element. So yeah. he was Bruce Willis and I was Mila Jovovich. I was not convincing as Lilu. <laughs> 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 I mean, that was just not going to sell it, but I shit you not. I should send you that picture too, for your people to judge. I shit you not. I couldn't tell if that was Mark or Bruce Willis. That's hilarious. That's pretty funny. True story. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, and on that note, so thank you very much for your time and this experience, dear Dia. And I'm glad you like hockey. And my mission in the world to get another hockey fan out there is complete. I'm not buying a jersey, but yes. <laughs> Yet. <Yeah. laughs> Shannon's Coyote Tales is a production of Coyote Visions Productions and is hosted by Donna Shannon. Ugh, nothing redundant about that. Theme music is Coyote Strut by James Nay. All other music is ethically sourced and licensed from SoundDogs.com and EpidemicSound.com. And we paid for it, I swear. We can provide receipts if necessary. All the stories you've heard are true. Only the names, events, and facts have been changed for our own amusement. In the immortal words of Obi-Wan, so what I told you was true from a certain point of view. Find all of Donna Shannon's website and social media links at Linktree. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot double E slash Donna Shannon. Follow us and find out all about upcoming shows and live performances. Now go out there, enjoy life, and grab some tales of your own. 